Hey, good morning. Uh, good morning, Divya. Uh, all right. Uh, Divya, let's begin this class. Uh, good morning, Pastor. Morning. Uh, yeah. No, it's okay. We'll, we'll begin. Uh, we'll just say a word of prayer and we'll begin the class. Sure. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you for the word. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in our lives, even as we just get together and study from your word. We pray your grace, your mercies, your anointing, and pray, Lord, that you will give us the wisdom to understand your word, of God, and apply it in our lives. God, we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so last week we studied uh, chapter 10, uh, planning and execution. Uh, and this week we will... Chapter 11, it talks about uh, profitability and corporate finance. Now, what I thought was we will just uh, go to chapter 12, uh, which is like strategic partnership. And towards the end of the semester, if we find time, we'll come back to chapter 11 uh, and you know just go over that. But uh, I want to look at chapter 12 and chapter 13, which talks about leadership. So we'll try and spend more time on these chapters. right? So let's move to chapter 12. Uh, strategic partnerships right now when you hear the word partnerships uh, you know when you talk about partnership it's always you know we, we always think of two parties coming together in alignment right uh, where there, there's agreement in a now when you think of it there are partnerships Right. Maybe it didn't match, or there was misunderstanding down on paper uh, even before the partnership was made. Uh, but if you look at the positives, strategic partnership is a great way to leverage strengths of two different companies or two different organizations. Right now, this organization may have a certain kind of an objective, and the other's organization may have a different kind of objective. Right, but uh, uh, but getting them together can definitely leverage expertise, uh, you know, uh, leverage in strategic partnerships, how to, uh, you know, it could be property, technology, uh, anything that we are seeing right now. But uh, the Bible teaches us and gives us, you know, insights on partnership, right? There are things that we must be aware of. Uh, now, when you look at it in ministry, right, uh, it's wonderful that we all have one main goal, one main vision that is to, you know, bring people to Christ, build God's kingdom here on earth. But uh, each ministry has, again, a different vision, right? Uh, and so when we as, uh, you know, as ministry leaders or, uh, or pastors, when we want to, you know, partner with other ministries, very important that we think about how what we're doing and why we're doing it right uh, plan uh prayerfully decide on how you want to do it. now it's not wrong to partner with other ministries it's good right more can get done uh but you don't want to step into something and then later realize hey i made a mistake right so being wise so this chapter we'll talk about some of the insights some of the things that we must understand before you get into a partnership Right. First one, we talked about this little uh, a little bit uh, in the previous chapter. An ox and a donkey cannot plow together. Right. Remember the ox and the donkey, the 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 horse and uh, uh, I forget which is the other one. Uh, the horse and the donkey syndrome. Uh, but here it's an ox and a donkey which cannot plow together. Now look at this. Deuteronomy twenty two and ten. Don't plow with an ox and a donkey yoked together. Why? Because now they both are different animals meant or to do different things. Right? Now an ox is built to do the plowing to it's a strong animal, right? It can carry a yoke, right? And it's fast, it's strong, it is Agile, it is quick, it can it knows how to do the work. 
Now, if you look at donkey, a donkey is normally used to carry things on it or to travel. Uh, you know, I'm talking about during those days, right? Uh, uh, it was used to maybe travel to short distances or carrying goods on it. Uh, it was not used to, it's, it's not meant to, you know, to do hard work on the fields. It's not as strong as a, an ox. Now, what happens if you put an ox and a donkey together, yoked together? The ox is going to keep saying, hey, come on, donkey, let's go. The donkey is saying, hey, I can't, I can't, it's too much. So what's happening? The, the ox is so much stronger and powerful, and it would be able to carry the weight, and the donkey is only going to become a liability. Right? Why? Because there's no compatibility between them. They don't match. The ox and the donkey do not match. The donkey is meant to do something, and the ox is meant to do something else. If you're trying to plow them in the same field, the only thing that's going to happen is the ox is going to make the donkey angry, and the donkey is going to get upset with the ox uh, because there's no compatibility. Right? Now, what is it that we can understand from this? When you and I are getting into partnerships, Look at where you stand as an organization or a ministry and see whether this is going to be compatible. Are you, all, are you both in line with what you want to do? Uh, are you able to fulfill the goals and commitments of the employees? Partnerships are never one-sided. Right? I remember a long time back in 2000, I think it was 2014. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm guessing it's 2014. We had the Power to Change campaign, which is a global campaign uh, all across. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, they went to different countries in different uh, uh, you know months, and so uh, I think they did the campaign here in our nation for about two months, and uh, uh, and it was a wonderful campaign. Uh, it was a wonderful partnership that we had, and I remember. You know, just working with the team, power to change, and uh, um, uh, you know they were they were so our ideas. They were so open to how to, you know, we would uh, we also asked them, you know, uh, as you we'll make power to change those books, um, you know, we will also put some of our books and we will post it out. So they said, yeah, that's that's a good idea. They gave us addresses of, of people, and we had some addresses. So together, uh, we worked it out. Right? Uh, so that was a good. You know, it was a strong company. They were able to do a lot, and we were also in a place where we were able to, you know, uh, uh, post our books and reach out to people. And we had ministry teams during that time to, you know, call and pray for people who had needs. So it was a wonderful partnership, but it was a strategic partnership, right? So, uh, remember that a partnership is two sides. It's not like the person who's getting into the partnership is the main and the other person is not. No, it's both of them put their hands to the plow, right? Uh, now, especially in ministry, when you are planning to get into a partnership, always uh, think twice, read through, prayerfully do it. Right? Uh, the reason I'm saying especially in ministry is because there's lots at stake, right? Uh, more than the money or more than uh, what people may think it is about, you know, is God glorified in this, right? Uh, is is God is the goal of the ministry of this partnership to build God's kingdom or to just increase our, us uh, as a ministry? So all these things must be very well thought of, planned out uh, before taking the step. <clears throat> Secondly. Know whom you're dealing with, dig deeper and get all the facts. Proverbs 27 and verse 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Right? Now, when we are entering into a strategic partnership, learn more about the company. Right? Now, in a day and age that we are in, uh, you know, mostly if you want to know about something, you can just go up, go to Google. Uh, or probably, you know, organizations have their websites. So, for example, if uh, if there's a ministry and, uh, you know, they want to partner with another ministry for maybe six or seven months, dig deep. 
right? We'll say, okay. So this other ministry says, hey, we want to partner with you for six months, join together, and maybe six months a year, whatever. Uh, uh, and you know, we can we reach out to the youth in our city as a as a, as two different ministries join together and reach out to the youth. Now it's a wonderful idea. Like it's it it's a call for unity. It's it's a call for God's people coming together. Wonderful, right now. What we must also do is dig deeper. So what would I do in this case? Right? What I would do is I would just go up on the website. One, uh, firstly, I, of course, I will talk to the leader and I will say, uh, you know, just plan out everything. Uh, you know, even as they talk, we'll get to know. Or what's the idea what's the big strategy or uh, what is the main intention of them wanting to partner right uh, then you feel free to ask questions ask them uh, how we'll go about these problems what these are the basically do a whole SWOT analysis uh, and see uh, what what are the pros and cons of this partnership put it down on paper or maybe you can discuss it two is I can also what I would also do is go to the website, read about their ministry, uh, read about their, you know, what, what are their beliefs, uh, when did they start, what is their vision. Now, it's not about they should be 1,000 people, only then I will uh, partner with them. It's not about the strength, right? But it's about what is their vision, what is their mission, right? So uh, a church is not, uh, it's not about the strength. It's not like if you have 5,000 people in your church, the church is wonderful you know it's a great church it's not about that you can have 500 people and do much more than what 5000 people can do right so it is about the values about what is their culture about uh, the way they treat their employees the way they uh, their beliefs right uh, right that is very important especially in in ministry beliefs right? now imagine uh, you know there's a ministry they don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They believe in everything else, right? Just an example, right? Uh, not against them, but just you know, what if there's they don't believe that the gifts are still prevalent? And now, what if you know there's this other church that's flowing in the gifts of the Spirit? Right? They have all the gifts flowing. There, there's healings, miracles, prophecies, everything. Now they're partnering together. What is going to happen? It's going to be the donkey and the ox syndrome, or sorry, the ox, yeah, the ox and the donkey syndrome. It will be like, oh, God is can God can bring healing, the anointing is there. When the other people say, hey, no, no, let's just look at the word, uh, let's read the word. And then there's this whole confusion. Right? So it's good to know who you're dealing This is just an example, right? So when you take it in the corporate sector, uh, make sure you know who you're dealing with, right? Uh, uh, be prudent, think, prayerfully consider, uh, see the level of commitment that they are willing to put in. Right? Uh, it's not like, okay, we, we are in partnership and just leave it there. But see the level of commitment. Are you willing to commit to the, this much? Or uh, these are the things that you must be willing to commit to. Are they willing to do that? Right. Next one. Evaluate work approach before saying I do. Proverbs 1, 10 through 15. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait to shed blood. Let us lurk secretly for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol and whole, like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious possessions. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Casting, casting your lot among us, let us all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your, your foot from their path. So basically, we're talking about how you go about accomplish something that is important. Now, just because I want to accomplish something, how I go about accomplishing it? It, it? It's not like I can use devious means to accomplish it. It's not enough to be profitable or to be successful in ministry, but how we get there is important. Right? Now, we can use a hundred devious methods, 
you know, bribing and, uh, you know, money laundering. We can do all of that and get to our profits, reach our targets. Uh, I can say, hey, I reached my targets. But the truth is, we have reached a target by wrong means. So work approach. Before getting into a partnership, see, or you know, you know, initially, you may not know all of this. Right? You may not know how they work and how they are, uh, you know, what kind of work they do. But what you can do is, you know, test their work approach. Right? You can check with them. OK, so if this has to be done, how will we do it? And when the way they speak, the way they uh, come up with solutions, we will get to know uh, what's the hard attitude, right? Now, if the if there are differences that are radical between two ministries or two organizations, refuse such partnerships. Right? No, the mistake we make in ministry is we say, "Hey, no, we can do more together. Uh, you know, we can achieve more together." And there are a lot of times, you know, ministries have got into problems. Why? <clears throat> Two, three ministries got together. They did a big whole evangelistic meeting. Uh, I think this happened in the early 2011 or 10, 11, it happened. But there's a couple of ministries here. It happened in, uh, in our nation in India. Uh, these couple of ministries came together and they did this whole youth revival kind of uh, concert and they called people from different places. Now, what happened was at the end of this whole you know, you know, this whole event, probably it was a two or a three day event, but over the end of this whole two, three day event, uh, pastors began to say, hey, uh, contacts, right? And the pastors want new contacts so they can invite people to their churches. Uh, but the organizational organizers, you know, started delaying that. They said, no, uh, you know, we have to check this, we have to check that. And eventually, the other pastors were not given many numbers. They probably given very few numbers who they had to call and talk to. And the outcome of this whole thing, the pastors, you know, these are, you know, some were urban, some were rural pastors. The pastors hardly got any people to connect with, hardly got any people to follow up with. And everything just remained the same. And, uh, you know, it, it, it was, it was, it's not that people were not blessed, but then they felt that they were cheated. They felt that, you know, hey, as a ministry, they said they will help us. But the problem is, it was not on paper. It was all by understanding, word of mouth. And that's the problem with ministry. We take too many things by word of mouth. Yes, we love each other, we honor each other, but always do things on paper right evaluate your work am i doing it the right way right uh, now nowadays we have you know we can record calls you can email email is the easiest way so some of the things we do at uh, apc is whenever we have a verbal discussion we just go back send an email hey you know this is what we had discussed uh, this is what we plan to do these are the things that we had discussed. These are the things that we need. And thank you so much for you know, just an email. So now we know, OK, it's on email. Do we trust the other person? Yes, we do trust the person. Right Now, the other person can be forgetful. They may change their mind. Uh, one day they are angry. One day they are happy. And things may change. Right? And the email will not change. There. Right? So it's always good to evaluate. Next one, check alignment of culture and values in mergers and acquisitions. Right? Uh, Mark 3, 24 and 25, if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Song of Solomon 2, 15, catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Now, it's the same thing. When two mergers of two organizations uh, happen, uh, now it's like two families living under one roof. And it's making 
two homes become one. Now these mergers, now I'm not talking about partnership. Partnership is different, right? You're working together for a couple, maybe for a year or two years or whatever. And you go back doing your own thing. But mergers are when two companies become one. Right. Uh, and and we see this a lot in the corporate sector. I mean, two companies, they just, oh, another company will uh, buy the shares of the other organization. And then the name so the name is the same or, uh, you know, but they, but they both become one. Uh, there must be alignment of culture and values. Otherwise, it will be a mismatched merger. What will happen? How do you add in staff? Right. Uh, I'll just give you this example. It's come to my mind, right? Uh, I was reading this many, many, many years ago. Oh, uh, and this is the this is a motor company. And the motor company is an Indian company, uh uh Hero, right? In the name. They had they used to make these motorcycles and uh, uh, you know this this which was more mainly for uh, middle class uh, you know, employees of our nation, right? So they used to make these motorbikes, but over time, uh, I think it was the early nineteen nineties. What happened was um, this was an article I read quite some time back. I just remembered it uh, during the early nineteen nineties. Uh, this company Hero. Was not making any profits and right? they wanted to you know come up with these motorbikes that can help the working class professionals and you know the daily wage workers and make it in a way that they can also afford a motorbike for their travel and uh, but they they were doing well but they could not make a profit they were going under a loss right and uh, you know the whole the whole management the directors the board of directors said we need to Come up with some new ideas. You know, our uh, the nation of India is growing and growing, so there will be need of motorbikes. The only thing is, we are not able to reach the right target. We're not able to execute and plan well, uh, or, or something is missing. So then they approached this Japanese company called Honda, right? And uh, and then they, you know, somehow there was a merger, and they it came to be known as Hero Honda. Now. What happened after that was there was a boom uh, because Honda came in and uh, being a Japanese company, they brought in their technology, brought in their uh, ideas and inputs. And it was a merger that, you know, just it, it, the, the company just exploded. Uh, and now, they, you know, it's, it's, it's huge in our nation, I'm sure in other nations as well. Now, the alignment, values and cultures was set right. Both countries knew they wanted to be people who can help, uh, you know, the regular, uh, regular working class professionals. So the the values, the uh, culture was the same. Okay, the point of this organization is that I can help working class people to get a motorbike and to ride, and everyone can afford it. It shouldn't be very highly priced. So that even the middle class people, and that's what the whole, uh, even the Japanese wanted, and so it was just come. It came together and it worked out. Now, not always that works out, but when uh, when the culture and value is is aligned and a merger is done, it can do great wonders. On the flip side, if a merger is done and the culture and value is completely different, a company can go to scrambles where. Well. Right, it can just become ashes. So we need to, again, be wise. Agreement is important. Put everything in writing. Amos 3.3. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? Right, this is so important. Agreement is important. Right, you must have it in writing. They may be the greatest prophet or the greatest apostle ever known to man. And they say, hey, I want to partner with you. You put it in writing. Right? Because the greatest prophet or the greatest apostle ever known to man can change his mind the next day. Right? So always put things in writing. 
whatever it is, and, uh, uh, especially when there is a strategy, there's a partnership, there's a uh, when you know that two organizations or two ministries are getting together, put it in writing. Now, when we do that, we arrive at a place of understanding. There's mutual understanding. Hey, the partnership was decided to be for one year, March 2023 to March 2024. So it's on writing. Now, if you have spoken to the per person, say, hey, March 2024, I'll, I'll go ahead and do my, I'll go back and do my own uh, business, right? So I, I need my shares. So yeah, 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 you can take your shares back. March 24, right? One year. Now imagine this person is, you know, maybe their best friend or maybe they're, uh, you know, they're uh, both the best Christians ever. But imagine March 2024, the other person says, hey, you can't leave because, you know, you still have to commit to what you have said. You, you haven't... Uh, you know, the shares or whatever you're, we are doing, it hasn't reached our targets. The other person say, but you said 2024, I can leave. You didn't tell me about any shares and uh, reaching targets and all of that. I did my best for one year. I partnered with you. Now I want to go. He says, no, you can't go because you haven't reached. That. So if you leave, that's good. Then, you know, I can take you to the court. What's happening? A simple, good understanding between two friends not put in writing has caused this problem right so if we had it in writing say march 2024 regardless of our uh, whether we can reach our targets or not i can be released from this partnership and i can go back to what i was doing if you have it in writing there is nothing even if the person says no you can't you can say hey i have it in writing so I'll take you to court. I said, yeah, you can take me to court because I have everything in writing. Agreement is important. Something that we do uh, and we always, always do at APC is we have things in writing, right? Not only internally, but also outside, right? So sometimes we hire places for our church services. We tell them it is a church heard you will have singing you will have after singing for 45 minutes you will have uh, a preaching of god's word too we are not enticing people we're not going to tell people you have to come it's they're coming out of their own free will three when they're coming if there will be people who are coming from other faiths it's not like uh, we are uh, forcing them to come they are willing to come for uh, we will meet sunday this is the timings uh, you know, this morning, 8 to 10.30 is our timings. And uh, these are the number of bikes approximately. This is the number of bikes or approximately. This is the number of cars. This may sound uh, not required, but it is required. Imagine you take a place, right? And you start, you start church. And after two years, you have some 15 cars coming. Where will you park the cars? Now the owner will say, hey, you didn't tell me there are going to be 15 cars. Oh, I didn't know about it. No, you got to think. Right? This is all, it's all about thinking proactively, thinking ahead. Right? So what if my church becomes 200 people? Then I'll have 60 to 70 cars. Where will I park? So I need to put it on the agreement. Right? If I, I will have about 50 to 70 cars parking with about 30 bikes talking so this is the space that i would need and right? now all that is important right there are there will be times when uh, uh you know lunch will be served during those times we will make sure we will clear the place clean the place these are simple things but you're putting everything every small detail in writing so that later on nobody can you know even if people come against you and say hey this is what you have it all documented put everything on a contract no, uh, every thing we put it on a contract, right? Uh, uh, and and then that way you know that it's well documented, government authorized, and everything should be fine. But you know that you're doing things. Um, next one: build business partnerships steadily. Uh, Proverbs twenty five seventeen. And when you find a friend, don't don't outwear your welcome. 
show up at all hours and he'll soon get fed up. Right. Partnerships are like marriages. They take time to build. Right. Uh, there are patches, rough patches. There are good patches. This company may come with certain uh, pros and cons. The other company may come with certain pros and cons. There will be expected, unexpected challenges, uh, matters to be dealt with. We need to work steadily, cautiously, and patiently. We need to be patient, right? So if you, if, 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 uh, you know, if you look at it at ministry, the ministry side, if you're joining another, you know, your two ministries are partnering for maybe three or four years. Uh, now, you need we need to understand. We need to be patient with them, right? Now, we may be a big or big church, been there for twenty years, and the other church partnering with us maybe is five years with just maybe hundred people in their church. Now, they need time to learn, adapt, and make changes, right? We need to understand each other. Just because we are there for 20 years and we know everything, we, we know our church has grown and we know that, okay, A, B, C, D, these are the things that need to be done uh, during any event. Or uh, doesn't mean we overpower them. It doesn't mean we say, okay, we have all the, uh, you know, we know we've done it before, so uh, you just do what we say. No, it's a partnership, right, where you can also, Make suggestions, ideas, and value the partnership. If the partnership is not valued, they may say, hey, you just made us partners and you made us like servants where we have to do everything that you say. Our inputs are not being taken. People are there. Are, are, our thoughts and contributions are not valued in this organization. What will happen? Partnership will eventually break. Right? Uh, there should be a sense of mutual understanding, adaptability, and that comes over time. Right? So give people a chance, uh, you know, give them a chance to work together, uh, uh, hear from them, hear their thoughts, hear their ideas, and again, together make decisions. This calls for humility, right? Uh, especially when it's a big organization and a smaller organization coming together, whether the corporate or ministry, uh, it calls for humility, right? So that's something that we must, again, do. Get all on board, on board to work the partnership, right? Uh, uh, can any one of us read this? Genesis 13, 1 through 7. Genesis 13, 13 verse 1 through 7. Anyone can read. Yes. Genesis chapter 13, verse 1 to 7. So Abraham went up from Egypt to the Negev with his wife and everything he had, and Lot went with him. Abraham had become very wealthy in livestock and in gold and silver. From the Negev, he went from place to place until he came to Bethel, to the place between Bethel and A, where he his tent had been earlier, and where he had first built an altar. There Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Now Lot, who was who was moving about with Abraham also had flocks and herds and tents. But the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together. And quarreling arose between Abraham's herdsmen and the herdsmen of Lot. The Canaanites and the Perizzites were also living in the land at the time. Mm. Look at this. This is a uh, thank you, Jafina. So we see here Abraham probably had hundreds of servants, cattle, lands. God had made him rich. God had blessed him out of being nothing. God just, you know, fulfilled his promise and he was materially very rich. And now there was Lot. Lot also was rich, right? Materially, he had lots. He had animals, servants, everything. Now they all were going together from place to place. And the servants of Abraham and the servants of Lord start fighting. Right? Uh, both Abraham and his nephew Lord began on this amazing journey together. Both were excited. Both were eager to reach their destination. Both were very strong. Both were successful. Yet, there were problems between their employees. The employees, the servants couldn't get along. Right. So 
what does it teach us? You know, later on we see in that uh, uh, in that chapter, uh, you know, they go their separate ways. So you see the picture. Abraham is nephew Lord. God has blessed both of them. They have hundreds of servants. Abraham has hundreds of servants. Lot has hundreds of servants. But Abraham and they fine with each other. But their servants are fighting. Hey, your your sheep is always coming this side. Hey, your you know your servant told this. You, you fight. There's arguments between them, the employees. But Abraham and Lot were fine with each other. They don't know. Hey, I have hundreds of servants, so they are doing all the work. I'm just you know spending time in God's presence, and they had no problem with each other. But the employees were fighting, the servants. Now, what does it teach us? Teach us, uh, teach us that when partnership is involved, it's not only the leaders uh, who are you know in, in the organization who are involved in that partnership. The employees are there. They must be also, you know, get them all involved. In the sense, imagine you've got a. This happened a uh, long time back, but uh, I'll share this and then I'll share this example. Imagine you got an organization. You got maybe forty people in your organization. You've got a small office space, and then you do this partnership, and then the other company comes up with 20 employees. Now, you as an organization, as an employee, you know that you have to be in office at 9 a.m. The other company, the employees say, hey, I'll come at 11 a.m., but I'll work eight hours. So you got here one set of people come at 9 a.m., begin their work that time. And then you got the other, other organization, and those employees are coming to the same floor or the same office space. They're coming at 11 a.m. What is going to happen? Say, hey, you're supposed to be here at 9 a.m. Work starts 9 a.m. So no, I'll come at 11 a.m. I'll, I'll I'll stay up late. What's going to happen? Misunderstand it. Right. Now, the wise thing to do is get all of them together and say, see, this is what this organization follows. This is what this organization we follow. Now, we need to come up with a solution for this. So get the employees involved. Right? What do you think is good? Should we move the timing to 10 a.m.? So it's not for you. It's not for you. So 10 a.m., everyone here work from 10 a.m. Come up with a solution. So then when the work is, when the partnership has begun, we have people from two organizations, there's an understanding already there, put on paper, and they know they have to be there. Right? Now, this happened uh, many years back. There was an organization. Uh, it's called America Online, um, and and later on, uh, there was another company called Netscape, and they came in, and uh, there was a merger, right? So they had we had in the same floor, we had people from this merger company, smaller company called Netscape. They they would come, and they began to work in our office. Now the problem was in in this other company, the America Online uh, company. People were very hardworking. You know, they would not take breaks. They would just make calls, and you know, these incoming calls would be so much that they would, you know, just uh, uh, spend hours and work really hard. Right, out of seven hours or eight hours of work. Uh, it was nine hours altogether, so eight hours of work, one hour break. They would work really hard. But the other, the new, the other organization, which was merger, there were no calls coming to them. So they would come and they would sit, they would take breaks, they'd be chatting with each other. And here we are taking calls one back after, you know, one after the other, back to back calls. And we are hitting our targets. But even they are getting, because, because we are hitting our targets, they are also. Uh, being profitable, but they are not doing anything. They were not getting any uh, incoming calls. Of, uh, hardly anything. Right? There were times they would get ten calls in a day. That would be like five minutes each call. That's like one hour work. And the rest of the time they just, you know, with their headset on, just doing nothing. And this became a big problem in the organization. I remember the 
the managers and the team leaders said, how can this happen? This, uh, you can't have our staff working eight hours, taken back to back all the hundreds of calls in a day. And you got this, it became a problem. And the merger was, you know, it had, they had to bring all the employees. The employees said, no, we are not going to work today. We're not going to log in today. Uh, and it became a big problem. Big problem, right? I remember, like for two days, we wouldn't. We just came to office, but we said we're not taking calls because this is not right. And uh, it, it was more like a, you know, uh, a fight against, uh, uh, you know, there should be equality and all of that. So, so it was all started off by two leaders, but the employees there uh, was there was misunderstanding. So get everyone involved, right? If you have a team, get them all involved. Uh, now, if it's a small business, small ministry, we can do it easily. But you need to plan out if it's a big, uh, big organization or a big ministry. How will you get everyone involved? So plan it out well. Next one: Let go when you have to. Genesis thirteen eight and nine. Then Abraham said to Lord, "We are relatives. Your men and my men shouldn't be quarrelling. So let's separate. Choose any part of the land you want. You go one way." And I'll go out the other way. Not all strategic partnerships will succeed. That's a fact. But when they don't, just let go in good terms. Right? Go your separate ways. And it's better to do that than to be together on the ship and the entire ship sinks. Go your separate ways. Bless each other. Pray for each other. Or you know, just say, hey, uh, all the best for your organization. Um, you know, we tried this; it didn't work. So maybe we'll try it uh, after a couple of years and see what it is. But it is better to let go than to hold on to something and you know just be on the waters, uh, unsure of the future and right? unsure of productivity. It's better to let go of partnerships, right? Uh, resolve disputes peacefully if possible. Proverbs 25, 8 through 10. Do not go hastily to court, for what will you do in the end when your neighbor has put you to shame? Debate your case with your neighbor and do not disclose the secret to another, lest he who hears it expose your shame and your reputation is ruined. So basically, in partnerships, strategic partnerships, uh, disputes may occur. Uh, now, when disputes occur, try to resolve it within the organization or within the uh, now even in ministry, right? Uh, try to resolve it uh, within each other, among each other. Try to resolve it as much as you can uh, in closed doors. Uh, right? You know, the verse says, uh, "Don't take them to court, lest later we be, uh, you know, let's say that uh, later we be put to shame." So. Uh, think about it, right? Even when you feel that there's something that's going wrong, try to, you know, sit together and on a table, just talk it out, try to bring out a solution. That's the best way to do it. But if things don't work out and you feel that, you know, it has to go up, um, then you may have to do it. But then again, uh, be wise on how you do it. Right? Uh, so that's very important. Right, so we come to a close on this chapter. Next, this coming week on Wednesday, what we'll do is we'll talk about a very, very important chapter, which is chapter 13 on leadership. Right? And we talk about the aspects um, and uh, attributes and characters and things that we need to have as leaders and how do we, uh, as leaders, develop this attitude of leadership and then pass it on to the next generation. A very important topic. So uh, this Wednesday, we'll start with chapter 13. And just an important note, our, uh, I put on the midterm semester. Uh, so feel free to just uh, uh, start working on it. You can just write it on a Word document and uh, uh, and then post the answers up on the uh, classroom itself, on the classwork tab. For the e-learning students, uh, I'll put up the midterm assessment sometime this week, so you can also begin to do that. All right, any questions? Today's lesson? Any questions, any thoughts? No. All right, let's close in prayer.
um, maybe one of us can clo close. Isaac, would you like to close on prayer? Isaac or... Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Father God, we want to thank you for this moment. We want to magnify your name. We want to glorify your name for bringing us together to take a lesson and to learn how to live our life in the workplace. We want to thank you for our pastor and our colleagues in the, in the school. We ask that you continue to grant us wisdom so that we can absorb as much as possible what we are learning and then you give us the light so that we can be a beacon of hope to others who will share the light with others we want to thank you for everything that you are doing in, the, in our school in our families we ask that you continue to bless and guide us as we go through the course this and all other masses we ask in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen Amen. Amen. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a great day ahead. I'll see you on Wednesday. God bless.